The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello. Uh, welcome to one of our Run Sign Up webinar series. I am Johanna, and I handle marketing here at Run Sign Up. Um, we have a couple of quick notes just to start off the webinar. Um, we do record all of our webinars, so we'll be sending this out at the end of the webinar. If you miss anything, don't worry about it. You'll get it later. Um, if you have any questions during the webinar, you can always enter them in the question module at the right of your screen. We'll take most of the questions after the webinar concludes. If there's anything that we don't get to or we can't answer live, then we'll follow up with you after. Uh, for today's webinar, we're handing our controls over to our first national sponsor and one of our technology partners, Strava. If you're not familiar with Strava, they're a social network built for athletes, and we choose to work with them um, not only because they're a potential revenue generator for races, but because we also really believe that they have technology that can enhance the experience of races through community building. And we really love the potential that they have as a promotion tool. So a lot of the, this webinar is about is how you can use them um, to enhance your race and also to promote your race. Leading most of the conversation today will be Larissa Rivers, who leads the U.S. local marketing for Strava and focuses on partnerships with races and organic marketing. And Mike Wynn, who works in growth marketing with a focus on leading paid digital acquisition programs. Larissa and Mike, it's all you. Thanks, Johanna. Um, it's nice to have everyone join the webinar. Um, this is Mike, um, and I'm joined with Larissa. Um, thanks for taking out the time of your busy schedules to um, participate. So um, just a quick hello from Strava. This is what we look like. You probably won't see us. Um, but yeah, as, as she mentioned, we both focus on marketing. Um, Larissa is uh, focused on U.S. local marketing, and I'm focused more on um, paid acquisition. Um, so the presentation we have today isn't super deck heavy, because um, I think the best way kind of to explain um, how to do a lot of the things that we're going to talk about is just to show you guys. Um, so a quick overview of like what we're going to go at, uh, what we're going to talk about is just one for those who aren't, aren't familiar. What are Strava clubs? Um, how do they work? Um, how do I set it up? And then what I think was it would be really useful for you guys is essentially what are some cool examples of um, clubs um, in our ecosystem that have been leveraging it to really expand the user participation past race day. So we, we pulled out some examples of some clubs that are that are doing a great job in terms of um, using them to one, um, you know, work, um, engage with their communities, um, you know, throughout the entire year, but also to um, build build more awareness around their their events. Um, and then what, I, what we'll kind of swing after we talk about clubs, we'll kind of focus in on um, what's ex what exactly is the Run Sign Up and Strava partnership and how can you uh, best leverage our partnership to kind of grow your club and, and um, grow the members um, in your community. Um, so I'll, I'll hand it off to Larissa to kind of start um, talk about clubs and, and um, what they are. Great. So um, as Johanna and Mike mentioned, I'm Larissa Rivers. I have been at Strava for a long time, so the evolution of our clubs has been really fascinating to watch. Um, as Mike mentioned, these are a great way for you to build community uh, post your event. Um, it is an evergreen club that exists on Strava, and what happens is if we join, if you have people join the club, um, they can participate in upcoming events that you might have, training runs, um, training tips that you might have via post, or it's a way for the community of people who've done these races to come together and to chat about the very experience, various experiences they've had with their, um, with their racing. Um, one of the great examples, and I'll kind of run through examples, and this is um, a blog page that you can have access to that goes through a lot of this stuff. Um, but the London Marathon is a great example because it's a huge club. Um, but it's a way for you to see how someone created a club around a race, but this community exists and lives forever um, on Strava. You'll, there's posts, so they're taught, these are all different um, training tips that they've given throughout the race. There's a club leaderboard, which is less interesting for um, some of the people that might be joining the club, but it's also so kind of a cool way to see how others are training. So they can dig into others who are training for the same race that they're doing um, via this leaderboard. And then this is also in essentially like a filtered feed. So you, anyone who's doing this race, you can also see what their activities are and maybe follow some people who are training for the race that um, live near you, connect with them to work out together um, and the like. The 
Other example, if you want to do something where you're going to create events leading up to a race, um, this is more of a club, this is a retail shop, but they've done a really great job with having upcoming club events on a regular basis. They use posts to um, encourage people to come to the events, and there's a way for you to RSVP, so 34 people RSVP'd, so it kind of gets rid of the Facebook group um, where there's a lot of noise and keeps all of your members in one place that the, is a relevant social network, so everyone on Strava is running or riding or doing activities to be on the platform. Um, and then the third example I wanted to show you is more Runner's World. They're more content heavy, obviously it's a magazine, um, but they've done a really um, great way of using posts to create engagement. Um, and, and I'd say one of the things as a race director, the great thing about these clubs is that they are evergreen and it creates this presence for the people who are doing your race to be informed all year round about the goings on. So you'll have race sponsors um, and it's a great way for the sponsors to also activate and engage with the people throughout the year. So they can, you can have one of your sponsors create a post. Um, you can talk about the different things that they might be giving away. You can make announcements about different sponsors who are joining the race. Um, and so these are just a couple of the content pieces that Runner's World has done, but they're, they post content pretty regularly and the engagement is really high. You know, you have like close to a thousand likes and um, people are commenting based on the uh, different posts they do. So you can add photos, you can, um, you know, it's almost like short blog posts, the amount of um, copy that you can add to these things. Um, and so now that you see the different examples and ways to engage with the post, how do you set it up? <laughs> um, I'd say it's relatively simple, but that's because I've worked here for six years, so it's intuitive to me. What I would do is um, use these tools to help walk yourself through, um, but the CTAs are very bold. It's like a big orange button. So if you go to the Strava website, you can only create a club on the website. That's one thing to note. Um, at the top right-hand corner of the club search page, you'll see create a club. It's very basic. Enter all the metadata into the field provided. You can make the club public, which I would recommend for most races. This way anyone can join. There is a, an invite-only private club. Um, if you have training programs associated with your race, this is kind of a nice way to create private clubs if people have to pay into something. Um, the person creating the club is the designated club owner. That can be, sh that can be changed after you create the club, uh, but just know that when you're going in to create a club that you'll need to make sure that the person who's creating the club is comfortable with having their profile as the club owner. Um, the other, like, other idea that you can do with that is to create um, a separate account on Strava um, to be the club owner so that you can have, multiple people can have access to the club. Um, once you create the club, um, you can also attach other administrators to the club. So the club owner can post and uh, make announcements. They can also, if it's a private club, they approve the members. But once you're an owner, you can actually designate others to be administrators on the club. So if you want three to four people, you know, able to post and do different activities on the club, you can do that as well. Um, and then they, and then you'll also want to make sure that you add a cover photo. We would uh, likely verify any race that we'd be doing. So the verification process does allow you to have more of a fancy, broader border at the top. Um, it also allows you to uh, take the club leaderboard away if that seems too intimidating for some others. Um, and it gives your post a bit more prominence in the feed. Um, and then I think that's it in terms of how the club setup works. Um, I'm just going to go scroll down here to the posts. Posts is a really great way for you to engage with the members of your community. It, they will get a notification in the feed um, as well as an email if they're opted into email of um, posts and events that are created on the club. So this is an example. We have a, an internal Strava Run Club, um, but every week we have a weekly workout and we post this um, on the club and get a notification every single time. Um, you'll go over to the tab, look at on post, and there'll be a button that says create post. 
This is also true of the app as well. If you go into the club, if you're an administrator, you can go in and create a post there as well. So the only time you have to go into the website technically is to create the club. You can manage all the rest of the club stuff in the app. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Mike to walk you through how Run Sign Up and Strava's partnership works. Thanks, Larissa. Um, so now that you, everyone kind of has an idea of what clubs do, um, I kind of want to talk about um, the partnership that we have with Run Sign Up um, in terms of one, um, how to grow your club, but also two, um, how can Strava help bring extra visibility to your club. Um, one of the things that um, I forgot to mention is like the, the great thing about clubs in general is that whenever anyone engages um, in a club, um, as a friend of an athlete, like you will see that person, like their activity with that club. So there's like a huge K factor vi uh, element that comes out when it's like, as more and more people join your club, um, that more and more of their friends see that like there's a lot of traction behind um, club growth. Um, so let me walk through what it looks like from your guys' end. Um, so um, if you go into your dashboard and you go into the sponsors link, you'll see that in the national sponsors tab, um, this is where uh, we host most of the uh, information um, for our partnership. So um, as Larissa kind of mentioned, once you've created your club, um, what you're able to do is essentially enter your club ID into this field. Um, so what will happen is once you create the club, everyone will get essentially a, a unique URL. So in this, in this case, I gave an example is like club slash example 1111. If that was the case, then your club ID would be example 1111. In the case that your club doesn't exist, we'll route you to, we'll route users to strava.com if you still are in the national sponsorship program. Um, but we highly encourage um, that you guys create a club and upload this ID because it kind of like consolidates the entire experience so that users are going to a property that's like associated with the specific race that they're that they're on. Um, one thing I want to talk about in case people weren't 100% familiar is that when you enable the national sponsorship, essentially what happens is um, there's a couple banners that appear um, on the Run Sign Up um, website. So. Uh, this is the Alameda Running Festival that I'm actually going to run in um, in August or September, I mean. And then um, what happens is um, when you enable the partnership, what you'll see is um, on the nav bar, um, there's going to be an extra tab that talks about um, training with Strava. Um, and if you have a club ID associated, when you click on any of these buttons, users will get routed straight to your club to be prompted to join your club. Uh, and then also uh, you'll see that there are some banner placements as well. Um, so. Like really, really encourage um, club creation because it just um, really consolidates this experience um, and helps you guys grow um, your profile and your, your footprint on the Strava uh, network. Um, so back to the dashboard. Um, so once you have that set up, um, there's a couple extra assets for everyone to use. Um, one of them is actually this um, featured running races page. Um, so we what we run at Strava is like this um, catered um, list of races that happen around the world um, and this this site um, essentially you know we, we get organic traffic that lands on this site so anyone that's um, you know opted into the um, sponsorship we're more than happy to, to list um, your race on uh, upon this website um, this website is an awesome place to just get additional organic eyeballs um, onto the onto your race in general um, there's also um on that anyone who runs your race who's on Strava who uploads and didn't wasn't aware of the race community they also get this email at the end that says like hey we noticed you ran this race and they can um, go back to the website to see how they stacked up against everyone who ran the race on Strava and sort of relive that race experience yeah yep and and the process to do that is actually the way we kind of do that is essentially what you what you'll provide is essentially the route of the race and what we, we can do is uh, map um, activities that are within that same time frame um, and associate those with, with that race. So, so there's a there's a quick Google Doc um, to fill out um, to get to get approved, and then once you get approved, you you'll get listed onto the the website. Um, and then we also have a Strava logo pack. So if, if there are assets that you want to you create um, the, and want to leverage um, our logo pack, um, it's all download downloadable here. Uh, the only thing that we ask is that um, you don't make any major edits to our logo. Um, use them as is. Um, but we want to, you know, be flexible and allow um, race directors to have the freedom to to place um, the partnership um, assets where they where they desire. Um, and then I think the biggest thing that I, I would actually talk about is um, when you've enabled um, this partnership, 
Um, it's great in terms of, hey, you, we have areas to grow your club on runsignup.com. I think the, the interesting thing about um, how, to, how to really grow your club is actually um, kind of speaking to the runners um, your, the, yourselves. So um, what we have here is provided a, a link where you can, you can essentially place this link wherever um, you feel fit, um, and that link will automatically drive users to your club and also give you credit for all new registrations that you drive. Um, so we've seen a lot of uh, club directors do some really interesting stuff where, um, you know, integrating this link into the email welcome, the, e the welcome email after you <coughs> um, drive a lot of registrations and a lot of club joins um, for specific races. Uh, we've also had um, different races, you know, put a, um, you know, a logo or an image on their website and then they use this link to um, send people from their actual race website to their Strava club. Um, so this this registration URL is essentially like a mechanism that we want to give, um, you know, the community um, to have flexibility in terms of like putting the integration where even outside of run sign up, but, but onto your own properties or your own messaging communications um, to, to how you see fit. Um, so yeah, so I think um, in general, um, that's a quick highlight of the Strava and Run Sign Up partnership. Um, I think we we are open to we have time for questions, um, and I guess Johanna, do you want to see if there are any questions on the line? Yeah, I've got a couple here. We'll start with what we've got come through so far. One second. One, I think this got answered during it, but in case anyone missed it. Um, I already have a club page and my organization hosts multiple races per year. How do we use Strava to spread the word about our race with Strava members that are not necessarily our club members? Can, For example, can we add our races to the running races page? I think you went over where that was if you just want to quickly say. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, so definitely on this um, featured running races page, um, you can definitely um, submit your races and this is, will be a new place. Um, where Strava members can find out about your race as they're browsing on which races they want to participate next. Um, another thing is that also as you grow your club and as more people join um, with those, interact with those races, um, those activities will show up on their friends' feeds. Um, so it's kind of like this like halo effect where the more engagement you get with those races on Strava, the more eyeballs will see those races, um, whether, whether or not they may or may not be directly uh, connected with your club yet. Um, but if they're connected with the, the with friends that are in your club, they'll they'll be able to see um, the activity that you're that you're driving. I think that answered some of this one as well. But if you have anything else to add, um, how does Strava promote the local races and businesses they're collecting participants from? Yeah, totally. Um, uh, the local so this featured running races page actually shows up organically. Um, so I think if you Google running races, I think this is one of the uh, first couple pages that shows up. Um, and also, uh, the way we kind of promote races in inside the app is it's through our algorithmic feed. So, um, you know, as users inter um, interact with um, your properties on the Strava.com uh, app uh, website or app, um, that activity gets gets shared into everyone's network. So, you know, if I um, join um, the OC Half Marathon um, on Strava, and Larissa is my friend, she'll see that like, hey, Mike's joined this this uh, race. Um, so it just continues to kind of get more and more eyeballs um, onto your onto your races and, and events. Um, this one is sort of similar as well. Uh, is this basically a social media app like Facebook? You can give your differences and similarities. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I think the our, our main difference is that um, we at, at the core of it, Strava is a tracking app, so it's a great place to upload um, activities um, from you know running, riding, um, swimming indoor uh, we've like integrated with 300 plus you know devices um, so at the core of it i think people find the most uh, utilization from the fact that like they use us as a training um, app um, and i think what what people um, a common phrase that we say is that people come for for the tracking but stay for the community which is that like um, you know it's always really lonely to run a, like it's lonely if you're just always running by yourself and what we see is that when people start logging their activities and start following other athletes on the platform um, they start to really be sold on like this community aspect of, you know, really empowering each other on, on reaching each other's goals um, and kind of this entire like kudos system of, of like, you know, you did a great run out there. Um, you get props from the community and it just it, it makes you inspired to continue to, to keep on to your athletic journey. Um, so 
yes, in the sense that like we are a social network in the sense that there are profiles and people can add comments and, and kudos. Um, but I'd say our, our main focus is just that, um, you know, really providing the tracking tools for users to, um, you know, improve over time and, and, and kind of measure their, their performance. Um, All right. Um, can you have one club for an event producer series attached to multiple events on different dates on run sign up? Um, the way I would think about it is if you have multiple races, um, host them as separate races and and link them all to one general like club. So like if you have a series of races, you might have like an overarching you know um, club that hosts all of them. Yeah, New York Roadrunners is probably a good example of that. New York Roadrunners has a club on Strava um, where they talk about each of their events. I think they have like 75 races a year. Um, but then they each have each of their individual races exists as a race page on our platform. And so everyone who's done New York Roadrunner races is in this community, and so they're all being talked to through the club um, about various events, but they're not just, there's not just an individual club for each of the events. It's probably an extreme example, but um, yeah. Yeah. it's certainly the same use case. We have a couple questions about virtual races, um, how, you would, how you would use it with a virtual race, uh, if you would do a club or an event for that. Yeah, I don't know if you want to take that one for virtual race. Um, there's a there's a couple ways you could do a virtual race. Um, I guess if you were going to, I would almost schedule a, a club for each of them because then you could do um, a club for each event that you're doing. Um, I think it would depend on how large the virtual race is. If it's like one or two a year, then I would do a separate club for each one. Um, if the goal is to have virtual races throughout the year under one organization, then it might preclude you to do an event for each of those. Um, and then I guess it would depend on how you were doing the, um, the results in that, since we don't necessarily take results on Strava um, for those. But I think it depends on how many you're going to have under that one umbrella. Yeah, and, and I think um, one of the things too is um, as this product is com uh, consistently developing, so if there's feedback on like how can we, um, you know, support you know virtual races in a specific way, um, it's definitely feedback that we'd love to get from the Run Sign Up community um, and then get into our product roadmap. Take a couple more here. Um... Does this apply to cycling related activities too? Um, yeah, I like, um, like clubs. Yeah, yeah. clubs. Yeah, sure. clubs are. Um, yeah, this everything that we talked about here applies to to actually um, cycling um, or even like swimming based events. So it's um, we focused on running um, just because we thought the audience was more of a, um, a running audience. But yeah, like if you have cycling events. Um, it's the same process um, and kind of the same flow. Um, and actually, one thing I forgot to talk about that um, totally blew my mind, uh, skipped my mind when I was talking about this entire thing is like the 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 thing that we the reason the a really big reason why we wanted to partner with Run Sign Up is that um, you know I we believe that we provide a tool that's really useful um, for both the athlete in your communities, but also um, for you to. Um, increase the discovery of your races. Um, so one thing I forgot to talk about is that, you know, um, as as you have these links, um, you know, as you are a part of this sponsorship promotion, um, for every new user that um, you drive into Shava.com, um, whether or not they join your club or not, but um, if every new registration that you drive, um, we actually pay out $1.50 um, to each of those races. So there's not like a financial, like, part of this entire um, a, a partnership, but but we hope that the real value comes from, you know, increasing user engagement and being able to, um, you know, engage with the community past, uh, past race day and leveraging our tools to better, um, you know, work with, with your athletes um, year round. The one thing I would note on that, though, is the featured running races that exist on Strava on the web, we do not have for cycling. But clubs can be used for all sports. Okay, that actually think answers one other question. Um, does, Strava, does Strava offer coached training plans or plan to do so? 
We do. Um, as part of our premium membership, you can sign up for training plans, 5K, 10K, half marathon, and marathon. Um, you can also pick how many days a week you would want to train. For cycling, we have um, we work with uh, Carmichael Training Systems for cycling and with McMillan Systems or McMillan Running for run training plans. For the cycling training plans, they're centered around segment goals, um, and similarly, they're you know somewhat um, picked based on your goal um, and how many days of riding you would participate in. But it is ba it is a premium feature currently. Can one club challenge another club? Oh, uh, get that question. Good question. <laughs> um, not currently, um, but definitely on the product roadmap um, of, you know, kind of these like um, club-based leaderboards um, and, and additional like competitive um, feature sets. So definitely something from the community that we've heard a lot of and um, something on the roadmap, but we currently don't support it right now. I think that covers most of these here. Um, if we missed anything or if we need more follow-up, we have all these questions recorded as well, so we will follow up with you more if we need. Um, everyone should get an email later today with the recording and also some of these pathways to make sure you know how to find the form to get to your featured, um, to get listed as a featured race and all of that. Um, thank you guys for joining. Thanks for having us. Thanks, everyone.